sitting here with Ray Higdon. What's up, Ray? Hey, what's happening? <laughs> Good deal, man. So anyway, uh, we'll talk a little bit. Let you, I'll, I'll let you share a little bit about your story. I'm, I'm sure unless uh, if you're on if you're online anywhere right now, unless you've been living on planet Mars, probably you've, you've probably seen Ray out there. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you imagine, Ray? <laughs> I mean, I can't. I can't profess that, but um, I appreciate the sentiment. Yep. Yep. Cool. So, anyway, uh, I guess I'll started following you. Uh, um, I don't know, three, probably about three years or so ago. Whenever you did the uh, the Eric Worre interview, talking about uh, the twenty nos a day, and that's really where I first kind of got turned on to you uh, a little bit there. So, as I'm sure some people have, but. Before we get into all that, I wanted to say, uh, uh, you know, kind of tell you a little bit, or you tell me a little bit about you and our audience that may not know, you know, about much about you and about your lovely wife, Jessica. Uh, sure. I got to meet uh, a couple of your sons. I got to meet them at Top Earner Academy. And uh, man, they were hustling, dude. I love the hustle. They, <laughs> <laughs> they were cracking me up. Yeah. And uh, of course, you got a new, you're a new dad to uh, baby Sabrina. So tell us just a little bit how all that's been going. Yeah. Um, so my, my brief history, um, you know, I'm, I'm someone that I always had an entrepreneurial spirit in me from, I mean, I used to sell candy in middle school and I used to swap comic books for toys in, you know, even early high school. And so I always had this entrepreneur spirit, but I really didn't have any kind of, um, you know, support, you know, like no one around me was, had, you know, really been in the entrepreneur space. And so I did what everyone else does. And that is, you know, I got a job and I started working my way up the, you know, corporate, corporate ladder. And I came to a point where I, um, I, I just realized I wasn't doing what I was meant to do. And I was spending more time with pictures of my, my sons and the real thing. And, uh, I just wasn't happy. And so, you know, I went out on my own to do uh, real estate, which actually worked out totally to my dreams for a few years. And then when the real estate market crashed, I got beat up really bad, ended up in personal foreclosure, um, lost everything that I had, and, um, and life was pretty lean. And a friend of mine invited me to go check out a, a home meeting uh, for a network marketing company. And I had nothing else going for me, so I decided to take that seriously. And uh, I went after it. And, um, hmm. Well, it looks like we may have lost Ray. Are you still there, Ray? Yeah, I don't know. I just I just got a weird message that I was logged out of uh, my Gmail account. So sorry about that. I no, hopefully that won't happen again. Um, are you able to edit this or? Uh, we'll flow with it, man. It's all. I, I think okay. we caught most of it. I think it just kind of cut you off there at the end. All right. So you know, um, I just decided to run at it and. Went for I read a book called Go for No, and I decided to go for 20 no's a day, and I went after it. I did 20 no's a day for six months, and um, you know, ended up I I actually became the number one income earner in that company my seventh month, and did over a million dollars in commissions. Um, you know, had 85 percent of the entire company in my team, and that was without any kind of spillover or anything like that. And uh, so you know, it worked, and in the meantime, a lot of people from other companies were reaching out to me, asking me for training. And so we built a uh, coaching and training business to kind of help people in other companies. And um, that has since grown into a, a large company a, or a good sized company. And um, now it's, you know, it's just awesome. I got uh, three kids, uh, two, two boys, 17 and 16. And then uh, baby Sabrina is three weeks as of tomorrow. And um, so just a lot shaking and moving in my life and very grateful for all of it. Awesome. Awesome. I wanted you to elaborate a little bit about uh, you just uh, shared the stage at the uh, the GoPro event with, uh, you know, Robert Kiyosaki, Tony Robbins, Bob Proctor, who, you know, has had a profound impact on my life and not only mine, but I'm sure millions of other people. You know, I'm sure that was uh, I don't I can't speak for you, but pro possibly a lifelong dream, maybe a little bit. How, uh, you know, tell us a little bit about that experience. Yeah, it was, it was definitely awesome. Um, so, 
you know, I got uh, I got a message from from Eric Worre not too long ago asking me if I'd be willing to come out and speak on his uh, social media panel, and I said absolutely. And you know, so it's it's really awesome to I had never seen um, Kiyosaki Proctor or Tony Robbins speak live. I'd actually met Tony before, but I'd never seen him actually train live. So. Not only was it quite the honor to share the stage with all those amazing legends, but it was also super cool to actually see them all train. You know, I've gone through a lot of Bob Proctor training over the years, and at 81 years old, what an amazing dude. Um, I mean, he just had so much energy, and his topic was so deep and so powerful. Um, I was very, that was a really, that's definitely a highlight reel of my uh, business career for sure. <clears throat> awesome. Well, that sounds good. Why don't you elaborate a little bit more of your story and uh, uh, a little bit of, uh, ago, but uh, I met uh, a personal, uh, I guess, hero of mine and mentor, which was Jerry Clark at yeah. your uh, Top Earner event, which yeah. was a big deal for me because I've had pretty mm -hmm. much this whole thing. And then, of course, he sold some of his products, you know, on sale. And I said, Jerry, I wish I'd have known that. I wouldn't have paid the thousands for him. I knew you're going to bundle them all together, yeah. <laughs> which was pretty cool. But uh, in, yeah, Jerry, Jerry is one of my very first coaches. So, you know, I, I, I worked with him, I think, back in, I want to say 2010. You know, he was one of my really early coaches. And um, yeah, he's a great guy. Yeah, it was, he's, he's hilarious. I just I love his style. So but uh, anyway, uh, one, one of the questions that, uh, you know, I had just a few questions for you. One of them was, um, you know, you're known for promoting building your brand. You know, and obviously a lot through blogging, uh, how to build your brand, how to build your authority. And uh, I've been through your three minute expert, uh, actually getting ready to go explore it, go through it deeper since I've really implemented a lot over the last few months with it. And uh, going back to that, and uh, I would highly recommend for anybody that hasn't picked that up and you're uh, wanting to build your brand, obviously, that's uh, I would definitely recommend that is is really the go to source. But uh my question is, why do you think it's so important today for people to build their brand? And especially, you know, with all the technology changes and, you know, what, if any role you believe that all plays in, in that? I mean, there's, there's lots of reasons, you know, <clears throat> most of us that if we're, especially if we're talking the network marketing space, are we talking the network marketing space? I think yeah, more so that's, that's going to be more of the crowd that sees it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the, especially if you look at the network marketing space, um, all of us, I believe, we get started in a company and we believe this is the one, right? And this is the one we're gonna be with the rest of our lives. We're never gonna go anywhere. And um, a lot of times that's not the, you know, that's not reality. Um, sometimes it's, you know, we make different decisions. Sometimes there's company changes. And, you know, I know a lot of people that, um, they've had their company go under. And that's one reason. You should you know, understand that no matter what company you go into or what opportunity you're doing, wherever you go, there you are. And what that means is you should be building you um, because if you focus on building your skill set and getting content out and getting marketing out that is attracting people to you, then you don't have a crutch. See, some people, they have a crutch in that they have, um, they're making money through a particular thing. And if that crutch ever gets pulled out from under their arm, they fall down. Uh, well, if, if you don't, if you brand yourself and people are genuinely attracted to you and what value you bring to the marketplace and how you help them solve problems, how you help them achieve their goals, then you don't have a crutch. You know, you're, you're the powerful thing that's going to attract anybody. And that's when you see people that, you know, they go into, you know, one company, they're a top earner. They go into another company, they're a top earner. That's typically because they have figured out the whole value proposition when it comes to their, their personal brand. It's easier than ever. I mean, you know, back when I first started with real estate, you know, for you to brand you, you really had to run workshops, seminars. You had to buy advertising in like magazines and things like that. Um, now, I mean, you have... You can flip a switch and on Periscope have hundreds of people on a Periscope, you know, right on your phone with one button. And, you know, so now it is a lot easier than it's ever been before. 
Um, and so there's just there's just so many reasons, you know, brand yourself. And I, I, I just believe if you build your own email list through your own kind of content and things like that, uh, I don't I don't know that you'll ever go hungry. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. And that's that's really what attracted me uh, to that as well. So, uh, you know, what would you say to those that want to build a brand? But they've had no success in the past in network marketing. They've uh, they're a member of the NFL. You know, they got they got no friends left, right? Sure. Everybody runs the other way when they're coming at them. They're uh, affectionately, I would like to call them a techno idiot. Maybe they don't know what to yeah. do online as I did. Totally yeah. scared me to death when I started doing it. I mean, you know, is there any hope for these people, or uh, you know, what what could they do? Some simple steps to get them started on the right path. Yeah, for sure. There's absolutely hope for them. Um, first of all, <clears throat> you don't have to have an impressive resume to start becoming an online authority. And that's probably the biggest challenge for people in that they, they don't understand that. They think that if I'm going to build a big brand online, then first I must accomplish a whole bunch of things. Well, when I first started blogging, I was in a house, I was in foreclosure, I had failed in 11 different network marketing companies. Bill collectors were literally knocking at my door, calling my phone every single hour. I was not the epitome of success. And, you know, I, that doesn't mean that I shared that on every video, because what's the point of that? But it, do, it, it means that you don't have to be perfect or a top earner or, you know, have an impressive resume to start sharing and impacting other people. So the two biggest obstacles people uh, struggle with, with when it comes to online content is why would someone listen to me and what should I talk about? Well, you can easily get over both of those when you just focus on who you want to help. So if I look at my audience, I, you know, we serve, you know, network marketers and, <clears throat> you know, we do, we do attract, um, you know, other people outside the niche, but it's mainly network marketers. And we help them with, uh, you know, learning how to generate more leads, recruit more reps, become top earners, uh, improve their mindset, how strategies for team building and things of that nature. And, you know, you can learn a lot of things. And just by sharing those things, you can make a difference. And, you know, what I see a lot of is I see a lot of people that they attend webinars, they attend seminars, they buy courses. They learn stuff, but they just never teach it. They never take their notes and convert it to online content. If you just did that step, you would build an audience. And so sometimes I'm literally just looking at my notes from a course and I'm reading my notes into the camera. People love it. They eat it up. You know, when I went to GoPro, I made all, I don't have them on me here, but I made all kinds of notes and I shot videos sharing those notes. People loved it. Because, you know, even though there was 8,000 people in the room and 6,500 people on live stream, there were tens of thousands of people that couldn't afford it or didn't make it that appreciate me sharing my notes. And that's that's the power of online content is I didn't I know I don't start each video with, hello, I'm a two time best selling author and millionaire, you know, because uh, who cares about that? They care how it impacts them. They care, you know, uh, how and what I'm going to say help them in their journey. That's what they care about. So first of all, you don't have to have an impressive resume to start becoming an online authority. As far as, you know, the internet uh, and learning technology, you know, I mean, I, I hate technology. I really, I really do. You know, I, I'm not, I'm not a techno nerd. Um, I, I've, you know, my, my team, you know, like my, uh, the people that are, that work with me in my business, not necessarily my network marketing team, but the people that work with me in my business, they like crack up at me, you know, when I'm like, how do you do this in Excel? And they're like, God, Ray, really? You know, I can't believe you're, you're successful. Um, I, I don't know how to do hardly anything. I mean, I can't program my VCR. I, I, I just don't know much about technology, whether it's the computers or any other form of technology. Um, and, you know, so you're in a day and age that we're not in the, we're not in the fifties where you would have to hire an engineer out of MIT um, or wherever, and he was the only person that knew how to tweak the machine that you're working on, uh, you're in the age of you can literally have 20 people bid on your job for 20 bucks, you know, no matter what you want. So, you know, there's two things there. Number one, change your language. If you struggle with technology, stop saying you struggle with technology and you have a shot. 
If you don't stop saying that, you have no shot. So just, you know, just call it quits. And I love it that uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, he said the other day on one of his videos, he said, you know, hey, if you're a, <clears throat> you know, baby boomer or older, you need to get over the whole, you know, I wasn't raised with technology bit because it's nonsense. You just, you can learn anything that you put your mind to. You just got to put your mind to it and you got to change your language. So anyone at any age can learn technology, whether they were raised with it or not. You know, you're still a thinking human being uh, with a brain more advanced than any computers we currently have on the planet. No one even understands how it works. We just know that it works. And so you can learn anything at any age. You just need to stop, stop using uh, non-serving language that is preventing that. But let's say you can't. Let's say that all that was just baloney that I just said. Well, you can outsource it for pretty darn cheap. You know, you have places like Fiverr, you have places like $20banners.com. You have all these different resources at your beck and call that are very inexpensive. And this is unique to this time. You know, I would say uh, 20 years ago, it was a little tougher. You know, if you wanted a banner made, you're probably going to pay three, four hundred dollars to a local graphics guy, you know, versus now you can, I, you know, sometimes when I want a, a banner done, actually before we hired a, a graphics guy, I would go to Fiverr and actually buy four different projects and have four people for five dollars write me a little banner and I would just pick one. Twenty dollars. That's really not that big a deal. You know, I mean, we, we just spent that on lunch. And so, you know, you're living in an age where the learning capacity is so great, but the outsourcing capacity is also great. So it's just a great time to be an entrepreneur and it's a great time for you to get your brand out there. Yeah, and I agree. And the non-serving language, that was something that, you know, I used to be that way too, you know, be like, well, I don't know, I'm just not savvy. And as soon as I got over that and just kind of ran through those doors, you know, yeah. the, things started opening up a lot differently. So Amen. Totally I've noticed it too. I've noticed it, you know, for those for those watching, you know, Brandon is is one of our mastermind clients and, you know, really respect you. I've really seen you grow. And uh, now it's seen you just crush it and rock it. It's just really awesome. Yeah, we're excited, man. We're excited about where things are going. So awesome. Um, there was one question in particular I wanted to ask you, and that was um, about priorities and uh, being busy. You know, because sometimes being busy doesn't equate to accomplishing things. And I'm speaking of that because, you know, I am totally guilty of that, have been. And I'm really trying to adjust my life to where it's only – producing activities, you know, eyeballs on the presentation or, yep. or whatever, getting in front of people. So what would you say for somebody that, you know, maybe they're a little bit camera shy, maybe they're a little bit low on confidence, but you still had to say, you know, there, if you could narrow it down to maybe three activities a day, let's just say three, and that's all you could do, you know, what would that be to be the most productive to build your brand and also, you know, your network marketing business at the same time? Yeah. Um, so if I had to boil it down to three, I would say there's there's three metrics that you should pay attention to. Um, three metrics. And I'll and I'll give you I'll give you a couple activities too, but three metrics. Number one, um, if you're if you're wanting to build a network marketing business, okay, three metrics. One. How many eyeballs did you get on the presentation, which you mentioned? Okay. Um, you need to look at that, you know, and I have people tell me, they're like, I want to be a top earner. I'm like, okay, how many eyeballs did you get on the presentation last week? They're like, well, I don't have my business cards in. And it's like, what does that have to, do? I mean, I haven't had business cards in 10 years. You know, <laughs> what, what does that mean? You know, how many eyeballs did you get on the presentation each day? Number two, and this is a new metric for me. How many people are you getting in front of? Now, that's a little different metric, okay? Um, when we, you know, every day, almost every day, we do a blog post, a, a Periscope, and a podcast. Our uh, blog, you know, our podcast yesterday got 2,300 downloads. Our blog, our blog post got about 2,600 visitors, and our podcast had 700 people live and maybe about, you know, um, maybe about 900 total, okay? So... I'm getting my message or a, con a piece of content of mine in front of thousands of people every single day. That's a metric that if you're a marketer, you should think about. So tracking uh, how much traffic are you getting to your site? Um, how many people are watching your YouTube videos? If you're doing Periscope, which I highly suggest, 
how many people are watching those those periscopes and looking at it. Now, in the beginning, it may be abysmal. It may be like, oh, God, man, you know, four people a day. Jeez. Hey, that's where you start. You know, when I started, there were a lot of gurus in my space and I started, you know, there was already Mike Diller, Dan Sieg, all these, you know, Irway, all these other guys, uh, all MLSP. But I got started and I did the same thing. I had crappy views, crappy everything. The third metric is leads. How many leads did you generate? Now, what can be tracked can be measured, can be improved. And I, you know, some people, they, they aren't, they just aren't tracking. They're not being real with themselves on any of those metrics. They don't know if I ask them last, Hey, last week, how many eyeballs you get on the presentation? Oh, you know, they don't, they don't know. They don't know how many leads they got and they don't know how many, how many people viewed their message um, on a daily basis, weekly basis, et cetera, and so forth. You track those three things, your business will go through the roof because we are a uh, comparison. We're built for comparison, right? We compare ourselves to celebrities and we're like, oh man, I don't have that. You know, we compare ourselves to gurus. Oh, I wish I was like that. You know, so if you're going to compare, which we are, we're just built for comparing, compare your numbers. Compare that last week you prospected this many people, got this many eyeballs on the presentation, this many leads, and you got your message in front of this many people and try to beat it this week. That's a good comparison because if you, you start doing that and pretty soon you start changing the way that you act, you start changing your habits and you start saying, ooh, okay, if I do this, is it going to impact my leads, my eyeballs or my reach? Um, you know what? I don't think it is. Let me do something else. You'll actually start to mold your, your actions and your habits into accommodating those things that you are measuring. Just like if you wanted to lose weight, step one, start weighing yourself at the same time, you know, probably in the morning, you know, start tracking it. Okay. That way you can measure it and say, you know what, yesterday I was, I was this and today I'm this, Brr. you know, then you can improve and you go to eat, you know, reach for that piece of pizza. You're like, mm, you know what, that scale kind of hit me hard today. Brr, no pizza, right? What can be tracked can be measured, can be improved. Okay. So that would be uh, number one, um, doing things to accommodate those things. Those, that would be my three, as far as you know, eyeballs on the pre on the presentation. In the beginning, it's probably prospecting. If you're not generating leads, then you're not getting eyeballs on the presentation through your marketing efforts, then you need to prospect. Number two, generating leads. That would be creating online content with calls to action to either opt into a capture page or reach out to you or something of that nature. And then number three, your, your reach is uh, also either online content or webinars or home meetings or, you know, there's all kinds of different options there. But getting you in front of more people, that's a very powerful metric to do. And if I could just add, um, you know, maybe two more things is daily exercise, highly suggested, keep the blood flowing. That was uh, Richard Branson's number one tip for productivity is exercise daily. They said, as a billionaire, what's your number one tip for productivity? He says exercise. He says exercise daily because it'll keep you healthier, keep you out of the hospital so you can be more productive. That's pretty good from a billionaire, right? And also do self-development each day. Now, I typically combine that. So I'll listen to an audiobook while I'm walking, you know, fast, uh, you know, around my complex or I'm pedaling on the, you know, on the exercise bike, right? I'll listen to an audiobook. I knock those both out at the same time. So that, there, those would be my tips. Awesome. Well, I had other questions, but I think that would probably just about wrap it up as far as you pretty much about answered the other two, though, uh, that I really had. So I definitely appreciate you taking your time to do that. I wanted to pop up a um, pop up a little uh, link because there's going to be lots of people that are going to be, you know, seeing this, yeah. um, you know, seeing this interview and uh, it's going to be going out to our audience. And then who knows, probably tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands <laughs> at some point. Awesome. So um for those of you, I'm just going to pop this up on the right here. Um, I would highly recommend, you know, the three minute expert. I mean, as far as someone who wants to build the brand and I, I don't say that lightly because honestly, guys, I've, I've invested a lot of money into courses and lots of things this year. I mean, a lot. And I can honestly tell you the little bit that I spent on this course right here was, was a game changer for me. And it, it took me from a place of not knowing, you know, and being scared to do anything online to now just attracting followers every day. And like you said, it, it's starting to surprise me 
you know, that you're talking about Periscope. It was like, I wasn't even on Twitter not that long ago. And then hopped on the Periscope. like, I don't really got any followers. And 31 people showed up, to, you know, really to the first. I was like, what is going on here? I'm like, you know, it was kind of crazy. So, guys, if you're not taking advantage of that avenue, yeah. man, you should be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so there's a link over here. You can you can click on the checkout button. Uh, you can check it out if you want to learn more info, or you can go to winwithbrandonsimpson.com forward slash Ray. And you can check out more, get a little bit more about the three minute expert there. And uh, last thing for those that want to uh, uh, want to get more stuff like this, you know, if you want to see more interviews, you want to get more, you know, more tips. Uh, you know, I'm really considering doing a lot more top earner type interviews and uh, maybe putting that into like a little series. So those of you that you know want to stay in touch, go over to my website, winwithbrandonsimpson.com, and uh, you can enter your information there. I've got a five-step lead formula uh, to give away, and uh, or if you just want to get on and just keep up with cool stuff like this, uh, we'll keep you on the loop on that. So but that's about it. So Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Ray. I appreciate your time, brother. My pleasure. All right. Rock on. All right, man. Have a good day. You too, man.